So we're roasting some beans today, and uh, as you can see, this is my this is my basic uh, roasting rig. This is a uh, an off-brand Whirly Pop. Uh, it's not an actual Whirly brand popcorn popper, but it's a rotary popcorn popper. And maybe you can see in there the uh, way the mechanism works. This I turn this crank, and it spins a paddle inside. This is actually a wedding present I got. Uh, my wife and I got when we got married uh, 11 years ago, almost. And uh, we used it for one batch of popcorn, and then it sat in my uh, kitchen until I rediscovered it. And uh, at that point, I was not nearly as interested in popping uh, popcorn as I was in uh, roasting coffee beans. So what I've got here is some Bali um, Blue Mountain beans that I got, <clears throat> as I get all my beans from Mr. Green Beans in uh, North Portland. Uh, they have a great selection of stuff there, some great equipment, and they're very enthusiastic and uh, can really get you started. Uh, so I've got my Whirly Pop, I've got my beans, and I have a uh, basic colander right here that I'm going to use for cooling. And then of course, uh, as you can see, I'm on the uh, side burner of my gas grill that's in my backyard. This is my basic setup. I've got the flame going. It's at uh, full height, and I am just letting the inside of the uh, Whirly Pop warm up. Ideally, you want to have about 400 to 450 degrees uh, inside the inside the pot for for roasting. The trick is you don't want the pot to be cool when you put the beans in. You want to make sure to get it good and hot before you introduce the beans, and that way they start roasting right away. If the temperature is too low, uh, or it, it starts out low and increases once the beans are in, they don't roast; they bake. Uh, and I'm not terribly worried. I haven't had too much trouble with this being too hot. Uh, a lot of people will, will actually modify a Whirly Pop to put a thermometer in so they can get a good air reading uh, temp or air temperature reading right from the right above the surface of the bottom. Uh, I don't have that. Uh, my take is, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and go. Uh, I'm going to just kind of, you know, get a feel for it, kind of get an understanding of, of um, what all goes into roasting. And right now, again, I'm still just waiting for this to heat up. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is using primarily three senses and a little bit of a fourth sense. In, uh, in determining when the, uh, when the beans are ready. I'm gonna pour them in, which I'll be doing here in just a minute, and then immediately start cranking the popper. And the first thing that I'm gonna be doing is, is looking through this window. I don't know if you can see it too well through the camera, so I'll flip that open from time to time. And that's, that's a small, uh, small part of what I'm looking for, which is gonna be to see that they are gradually getting brown and looking kind of toasty. Uh, as you can see here, these green beans are uh, just a little bit, uh, this particular breed is just a little bit brownish green come olive drab and that will naturally as it roasts and starts to look like it's toasting a little bit will brown uh, the next thing I'm going to be doing is is uh, smelling so I'm going to be catching from the scent it's going to go from a very earthy kind of grassy vegetable scent when it first starts roasting until eventually it's going to start smelling like that familiar kind of uh, oily kind of burnt oil coffee smell and that's how I know I'm, I'm getting closer. And then the most important uh, sense for gauging where the roast is going is I'm actually going to be listening. Uh, I'm going to be going right through what we call the first crack, which is um, the, the first heat-based reaction that the beans make. And it, it actually sounds a lot like popcorn popping. Uh, so it's a real staccato popping sound. Uh, I'm going to keep cranking through that until we get to what's called the second crack, which isn't so much of a crack as it is so much of a... Of a kind of a rustle. It actually kind of sounds like Rice Krispies and milk. So it's a little more subtle popping sound, a snap, crackle, and pop, if you will. Uh, once I get there, that's when I'm gonna be paying very careful attention. I'm also gonna be looking at how much smoke is coming out. Uh, when the smoke is really thick and billowy, I know that I've probably overdone it. And what I'm aiming for is probably a, uh, I, I tend to be a, a dark roast kind of guy. My palate's very, um, uh, I, I, it may just not be very sensitive, but I like a full body, kind of a dark, bold roast. Uh, I'm not as good at picking up a lot of the more subtle notes that you get with a, with a lighter roast. So I'm going to be going kind of dark, so that takes me pretty much uh, about the middle of the second crack. The other thing to remember is when I take the, uh, when I take the pot off the flame, it's not done cooking. So it's still going to keep roasting for a while. There's enough residual heat in the beans. Uh, so you want to make sure to take the beans off the fire and get them into the colander for cooling uh, before they've reached the level of roasting that you want. Otherwise, you're going to be a step or two beyond that. So looking inside here, I'm seeing I'm getting a pretty good little bit of smoke coming out. Uh, there's a little bit of residual oil from previous roasts I've done. So I'm going to say this is about it. So I'm just going to take this cup of beans, pour them in, and start cranking. I don't want to wait. I want to get going right away. 
My Whirly Pop is uh, pretty squeaky. I'm just going to keep this pace up. And the fourth scent that I did briefly mention is, uh, I don't know if you can pick this up through the, through the visual, but the, there is a little bit of resistance in the crank, and it's a little bit, uh, a little bit of, of uh, almost like it's catching. And at some point, I think you either do the heat expansion of the pot, or the beans releasing a little bit of oil, it gets a lot easier to crank. And that's going to be my one of my early indications that I've got some beans cooking right here. So now here it is, just a few seconds in, I'm starting to smell those nice vegetable kind of notes. You tell me I am starting to roast. I'm going to go ahead and just give you a little peek in there. You can see it is just now starting to show a little tiny bit of color. You don't want to let these sit, is the other thing. So I'm going to keep spinning this pretty constantly throughout this whole process. And when it does kind of jam up, I'm just going to just kind of scoot it back just a little. There we go. Now it just got easier. So I think something's starting to happen there. Oh, I said that and then it okay. Okay, so Now I'm going to start listening to that first crack. Let's take a look inside here. See, yet yeah, we're starting to get a little bit of smoke. You can see that there's a little bit of toastiness going on. Starting to see some uh, roasted color. It's looking a little toasty.
and there's that second crack right there. And it sounds like... Okay, so that's about... Let's see how we're looking there. Okay, that's just a little bit into that crack. Very quickly transfer the beans into the colander and I'm going to stir them around. As you can see, there's quite a bit of chaff, which is the uh, uh, the stuff that's built up around here. Now I'm like, it is a little bit rainy today, so I am roasting in the rain. So there's a little bit of water in my colander, which I think is going to help my cooling. I'm just going to flip these around. They are going to get a little bit, uh, as you can see, all the chaff is coming out. The chaff is not anything that contributes to the flavor of your coffee, so you don't really want it. And I'm just going to do this. The uh, colander is going to be very warm to the touch with these hot beans in it, so I'm going I'm going to be very careful with that. I'm just going to stir around. It's a nice cool day today, so this is helping the cooling process too. Okay. And that 